If you don't know, about a month ago, Eastern Kentucky got hit by a record-breaking flash flood. The flood destroyed a ton of houses and buildings, swept cars away, and as of now, the death toll is up at 39. Now, I only live a couple hours away from the area that was affected. So just last week, my church actually took a mission trip over there, where we just went over there and we helped out all we could. I just felt like there was so much being left out because the news were there for the first week, but now that it's one month later, no one's really keeping up with what's happening. I want to take you guys down to Whitesburg, one of the hardest places that was hit, and show you what everything's like one month later. Then later in the day, we're actually going to go hang out with one of my buddies whose family's house literally got swept away and is completely destroyed. So now to start off the video, we're actually going to head down where my church has actually been working the past few days. So this right here, this is like our uh, supply tent. Yeah, it's where everybody brought in supplies from all over the United States. Here's our baby section. We organized all this. We have diapers, car seats formula in the back, kitchen supplies over here, towels, here starts our bucket, garbage bags, gloves, cleaning supplies, food boxes ready for people, all kinds of food over there, canned goods, we have hygiene products, all kinds of water, and in the back we have some pillows, sheets, and that kind of stuff to give out. And they would just pull up here to the side and request what they needed? And then they request what they need, and then uh, we pack it down there. Yeah. And so this here is the supply station. Now me and Travis, we're going to take you out into the wilderness, kind of, technically the creek. All right, guys, so we're getting on the road. We're going to take you guys down to where the actually all the all the damage actually happened. As you can see, bits and snippets of the creek right there. You can see the railroad right here. The water was actually above that railroad right there. Hey, watch for the trailer. There's a trailer. I think it's right over there. Yeah, over I there. see you it. You see it? Yeah, but I can't get a good look at it. Like, I don't know if you could tell what that was, but that's literally an entire house trailer that the water got up to, and it literally just picked up the house and moved it off its foundation. Look at that. Look right at there, this, bridges. That is actually the bridge to that thing, and it's just completely gone and ravaged and everything. This flood is not just your ordinary flood. Like, this flood was insane. It's like, like we were saying, it's like nothing they'd ever seen. It got over that railroad bridge. That sign right there was straight up knocked sideways. That's how much force we were dealing with. There's a random log just sitting in that tree. Now, as we go down this creek, keep an eye on the tree. You'll start seeing little blue things in the trees, almost looking like Christmas ornaments. Those are actually uh, surgical gloves, emergency gloves, whatever you want to call it. And the reason there are surgical gloves all over the place is because this is actually like an EMT fire department place. And I mean, you can just look at it. It got ravaged. Like the concrete was up. It got inside. There's a random ambulance just chilling out in the middle of the road, a fire truck. From what I've heard, this place is practically uh, probably never going to be saved. But FEMA said that it was a total loss. Did they? Yeah. So pretty much we all saw the blue gloves mainly because they stick out. But when we was on our way in, we could also see oxygen tanks, masks, different stuff that that place could definitely have used. As for the person in this building, a woman was living in here because it's an apartment. She was there, the flood water started coming in. Flood waters rose so high that she got up on her recliner and stood in the flood waters for 15 hours straight. And as you can see, and you'll see this a lot in this video, they're just giant piles of junk outside all these houses. That's because every single thing that was in there and got wet, most of it's destroyed. They're just getting it out into these piles and then FEMA's coming around, picking up all the garbage and go taking it to a specific place. Garbage pile after garbage pile after garbage pile. Everything in this whole little valley just got straight up demolished and everything got soaked. And I mean, it's kind of repetitive and that's kind of the point. It's just repetitive. It's like same thing, different house. And every single one of these houses has its own story and its own family that lived in it. We went into some of them the other day. There was mud all in them. And even in them, mold is starting to just grow on things. Look at all the stuff right there that's just been, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. It's just, it's all soaking wet and there's nothing you can do with it except junk it out. So after looking at some of the basic stuff you can see from the road, we actually headed in to meet up with our friends whose house actually got completely destroyed by the flood. We actually had to take a detour because the main road leading to the house was also destroyed in the flood just by water washing off the mountain. Long story short, when we rolled up to the house, the house was not there. This is where my house was sitting. Yeah. You can see where the grass is out and it's down there. And the water came across this way, the gray house right there. You can see all the blocks right here. That's the foundation of it. Before this flood, how high had you ever seen the water get? Okay, so for probably 18 years, the water never got in the yard. And so as the water was coming up, where was you and what was you doing? 
about two two something in the morning they, mm -hmm. they called us we got out of the bed the more the water came we saw that we need to start moving some vehicles so we started moving vehicles closer to the road and then in my mother-in-law and father-in-law's house my mother-in-law was worried about her the back porch giving way so we pulled the freezers in and from what time that we pulled the freezers in the water was coming up so fast that we had to get her out and i told her her knees and her hips are bad and i said vic when you step down step solid because it's the water's running probably by 3 30 i would say is when we had to make sure we were out of the houses the water was starting to get in the homes at that time now i did get out of the truck between the two heavy rains the water had receded enough to see the porch so the water came up then went back down yeah then came back up again oh yeah the second oh. one was the bad what was interesting about it was that rain was so heavy that by the time the effects of that rain got to us, it had stopped raining. It just had so much force with it that it, the porch that I had built on the house, the four befores were, were, were just barely holding it. And when they gave way, then just one pop after the other, and then it just, it just turned loose. It acted like a dozer blade. And when it hit Danny's house, which has been on the foundation since 1975, when it hit it, it just started moving it. And then it pushed and I've got a video of that. And as it pushed the house, my house started turning from it. And as my house turned from it, it allowed his to sit down. And mine went down. And then in the video that I've got, you can also see where mine is moving with so much force, the impact that it hits when it hits the trees on the property line between us and the neighbor down there. There's, there's trucks that's just rolling down the river. Um, some of them were just scooting, some of them had rolled, so the water was extremely high downstream and up here there was trees everywhere so we couldn't go anywhere that way. The water just kept rising and it rose up just above the road up there and when it got up to the road that's as high as it got. So you live right on the other side of the mountain. Yeah, at that time I couldn't get a hold of anybody, there wasn't any uh, cell service, there wasn't any power, anything like that. This section was blocked off. Mm -hmm and there wasn't any way to access it by car. So I put on muck boots, it was still very wet. And I climbed up that mountain up to about where that tallest peak is there. From there, you can actually see down here. So I knew kind of the direction to start going. And I started coming down this way and I had to favor this side. It was, it was at least a couple mile walk. And then I finally made it and came out of this holler here. I started hollering for dad and I started hollering for my sister and Mandy and making sure everybody was all right. It was, it was horrible to see that, it was horrific, but my family was all right and that, that is what's most important. A friend of mine found his daughter's car and all he could see was the back quarter panel and the back tire and rim is the only way that he knew that it was her car and it was just covered with debris underneath a bridge, probably three quarters of a mile down the creek from where it had turned loose. <laughs> Around this backside, there is a loader tar. And I'm telling you, it's this big around that's laying there. They just come rolling down through here. I have no idea where it came from. And it's rested back there. I don't know what we're gonna do with it. Very interesting, mm -hmm. very very powerful stuff water is. That whole school back in there, that's Wattsburg Middle School. And from what I've seen, it was like almost completely underwater, maybe completely actually underwater as you can see well school's about to start back so they have a lot of people there helping a lot of people there working a little bit of everybody's over there helping which is really cool to see everybody and come together for all this you can see that tennis court right there well maybe you can't tell it's a tennis court but that's actually a tennis court and it's caked in mud see when the flood water comes up that's one thing but when it goes back down it just leaves mud everywhere because the muddy water the water leaves the mud stays and there's just houses over there which was underwater but now they're just being gutted and they're soaking wet and muddy several friends of mine work at the school as aides and teachers they were looking so forward to this year they had everything ready heard from some of them talking about how bad it was that there's just nothing but mud everywhere the water had completely covered the entire school the roof was all that was left and now their concern is what is the school going to look like going forward all right guys this is whitesburg kentucky downtown where it got hit the worst i would say the water got up to i think right about here and so as you can look out and see everything from this elevation below just got soaked and i mean you can look over there and see that whole place got wiped out and you they just had to i don't know dig it out i guess that over there is like a subdivision 
and the water got up in pretty much all those places and now you can look at it and see what it looks like now that the water's actually went down down here these people got hit a lot harder than the people up on the hill the the closer they were to the river the the worse it was as you can see we, we ran into a guy from here in corbin he was checking on his son and then when he came back here to come home he found his home flooded there was no expectation of flood here whatsoever this water right here is so shallow my son and i have waited this for years and years and years it's not even waist deep and yet the water was enough to get all the way up and then into these houses that people just they never expected ever and when we get in here start digging it's untell what we'll find how do you think you're going to start digging equipment just bring in a big excavator and just grab hold of it and just start ripping it off this this was danny's uh back porch that's the roof for his back porch do you know what that's from that's probably from the um dirty bar right up here i'm guessing it should be i think that's where that picnic table came from as well mm. it's about a half a mile up the road oh my there is a paramedic backboard and now see this is not our property here this is the neighbor so we got all of our stuff laying in his house. Uh, that's Danny's back porch. I didn't realize my house went that far through. Yeah, I told you we were over when this creek. bush and those trees. No, it's not over the creek bad. It's getting out of where stuff's pretty dangerous. The mold is horrible it, and, and it's just crawling and you can just see it all over the walls, all over everything, mold is and flies. You know, because we had refrigerators, freezers, things of that nature. And as they opened up, you can imagine the smell is horrible when this one raised up uh -huh. and the water was in it as everything was going back and forth all the furniture all the stuff inside was going back and forth mine has got mud on mud on mud everything has a layer of mud all around the whole house when fema looked at it they could see the water line where it had actually got up in the ceiling so the fema adjuster she was here for a brief moment for both houses that was a very quick determination that they were total losses you're not going to fix these homes hey look i still got a there's an extension cord i might be able to recover but a lot of the bank is gone. The pressure washer, we found it in the creek and I pulled it up here and I came down a couple days later and the pressure washer was gone. I was like, somebody stole my pressure washer. The bank had fell off again. That's oh. like six, seven days after the flood. There's the door that Jack and Rose were on in the Titanic. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a... What do you do with it? <laughs> you could plant a tree in there. Yeah, that that would, would be real that cool. That would be really cool. You could plant a tree <laughs> and then 60 years later be like, yep. 60 years y'all could talk about it? Yeah. Because I'll be dead. <laughs> Catch it. You're supposed to, you're supposed to catch it. What your hand it. lands on, you got to answer the question. Oh, yeah. what are you most thankful for? Wow. There you go. That my family is out. Look at where we're at. You used to live That we here. started in. Yeah. This house. The last one. And we're still smiling. Yep. Everything's all right. It's all good. That's, that's what I would be most thankful for. Yeah. We're still happy. Sun's shining. It ain't raining. It ain't flooding. Right. We're just enjoying life. I think I'll keep this. The biggest thing to me though, is a lot of people look at tragedy, devastation. They look around and they see all the stuff that they lost, which is just stuff. And so what I've learned and seen through this is that simply what God's done for us, the blessings that's been given to us, the people that's poured into us and helped us and given and, 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 just, and just came to the rescue, has been phenomenal. There's people that's running equipment for people. When we're out trying to help people, there's always somebody reaching out to us. Hey, what can we do for you? How can we do this? We wanna help you do this. There was a man that was homeless that came to some people that was collecting some, some things to bring this way. And he said he wanted to help. He just had a small box of like peanut butter bars and two little small bags of chips. And he said, I know this ain't much, but I know what it's like to be without. To see as much Jesus as I've seen in the past couple weeks has warmed my soul. All day yesterday, we needed certain things like size 34 shorts. We pick up a pair of shorts and they were 34. We uh, needed a pair of 10 boots. We picked up a pair of boots. We just have a few here and they were size 10. So all day long, the Lord was working. With you being here as kind of a spokesperson for the area, okay. how would you say for these people to be able to help you if they wanted to? Honestly, the biggest thing is let people know you love them. That's where you start. You know, if, if people want to do some type of mission work and come in and help clean up, there's always that. You could you could hand somebody a $500 bill and, and, and turn and walk off. They'll spend that $500 and forget your name. But if you stop and say, hey, let me borrow that shovel or let me hold this for you and help you along, it, it goes a long way. Anytime you can lend a hand, just lend a hand.
But long story short, if you guys want to help, the biggest things you can do is one, just pray. Two, if you live decently close, come on down to one of the people that are effective and just help them out. They don't bite hard. And then three, if you have the ability and you feel the need to donate financially, I'm actually going to put a link down in the description where you can buy one of these shirts. I didn't make the shirt. I'm not selling the shirts. But all the net proceeds from these shirts are going directly to helping out all the people that were affected by the flood. Moral of the story, all hope is not lost at all. And as we know, God works in mysterious ways that we literally do not understand. And so although all this stuff looks terrible from the outside, we don't know God's plan, but we all are faithful that He has a plan. And that somewhere down the line, this plan is going to be amazing. If you were a superhero, what would your superpower be? Don't say Aquaman, that's a good place. <laughs> <laughs>